So before we get into a discussion of fluids, I think it's very important to establish what fluids are in physics. Now, for the MCAT, you're not going to be responsible for the highly technical definition of what a fluid is. So for our purposes, you should just think that a fluid is anything that can easily flow and change shape. You might notice that flow and fluid have the same root word. And what this means is that in the MCAT and in physics, a fluid includes both gases and liquids. It's not just liquids, but also gases, because both of those can change shape according to their container, and they can move in a relatively constant matter, manner together. And uh, when you're dealing with fluids, there are important things to consider. The first is a thing called uniform translational motion, and that's when all the little components of the fluid are all moving together uniformly. So in flowing water or in a, a burst of air or something like that, all of the individual particles are moving uniformly. And that's one of the characteristics of, of a flowing fluid, is that they have this uniform motion. Now, the other thing to consider is that there's also a random translational motion, and that is because, because it's comprised of all these individual particles, some of them are going to be moving in one direction, some will be moving in another direction. And this is what gives us the concept of pressure. Because all of these little particles are going to be sort of moving against each other, running into each other, bouncing off each other, you have a random translational motion that is known as pressure. And one of the things that tricks people up most when they're starting to consider fluids is that there are multiple ways you can analyze and quantify what pressures are present. With fluids at rest, the most important thing to consider is what are the pressures present. And then you can use that later on to perhaps figure out things like buoyancy. Now the pressure on any one point is equal to rho times g times y where rho is the density of the material and y is the height of the material above that point. So if we were under water, for example, here, y would be the height of the water column above that point. What that means is that as you go deeper into a body of water, the pressure gets greater, which you may have noticed when you swim very deeply under a swimming pool, or you may have studied some oceanography and realized that as you get deeper underneath the surface of the ocean, the pressures get far greater. There's only one reason for that, and that is because the height of the column gets greater. Now the pressure on a plane is defined as the force divided by the area. And so if you know the force on this particular plane and you know its surface area, you can find the pressure. And similarly, if you know the pressure, a lot of times, if the pressure remains constant and you increase the area, that way you can increase the force. And so an applied example of the pressure on a point might be, uh, if we have any baseball fans out there, who know that you can hit more home runs in Coors Field in Denver, Colorado, because it's so much higher. And thus, if the atmosphere is so high above us, there's a smaller column of air in Colorado than there is anywhere else. And that means that the pressure on a baseball is going to be less because let's just say we were at sea level, the pressure would be greater due to the greater column of air. But because Denver is the mile high city, you can um, have a much lower pressure and thus any object is going to have a lot less pressure on it. So baseball will travel further. There's an applied example of the pressure on a point using a non-liquid fluid. In this case, we're talking about air. Now, for this one, the pressure on a plane, you might see an applied example with something like a sailboat. Remember that when you're out in the atmosphere, the pressure is pretty much the same throughout. The pressure there is pretty much the same everywhere, and so this will be more or less constant. If we increase the area, in order for this formula to be true, that means that the force must also increase. And so if you have a sailboat and you want to get a greater amount of force, what you need to do is have a greater area that is going to be experiencing that pressure. And therefore, because the pressure is the same out in the atmosphere, if you increase area, you have to see an increase in force as well. So if you could keep these two fluid formulas separate, then you're well on your way to understanding pressure as it relates to fluids, which include both liquids and gases.